Welcome to Rider Nation Station, presented by American Manufacturing Solutions, your total logistics partner, investing in Rider Nation Station and St. Mary's, Ohio, and to our other fine sponsors. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Doug Fry Show. On Rider Nation Station, I'm your host, Joe Herbert, alongside head coach Doug Fry. And <clears throat> coach, we'll talk a little bit about the Van Wert St. Mary's game last Friday, but uh, a tough one on the road. Yeah, it was. And uh, golly, we're going to uh, week five of six right now, and things are just kind of buzzing by. But uh, so we've lost double overtime. We lost a uh, six point ball game. And uh, I thought Van Wert uh, has a very good football team, uh, but I thought it was one that uh, we, we uh, could have very easily won. So we've got some stuff we continue to try to clean up. Well, we'll talk about that in just a little bit. But let's take a look a little bit about uh, the, how the Western Buckeye League is shaping up after four weeks of play. Of course, Van Wert now remains the only undefeated team in the Western Buckeye League. They're 4-0. And they are followed by Kenton, OG, and Shawnee. At three and one mark, St. Mary's, Elida, Salina all find themselves two and two on the season. Bath is one and three. Wapak and Defiance are zero oh and four. Last week in the Western Buckeye League, in case you missed it, OG defeated Bath twenty to seventeen. Kenton defeated Defiance thirty-four to thirteen. Shawnee slipped by Wapak nine to seven. Salina defeated Elida 21-17, and of course Van Wert defeated St. Mary's 34-28. This week around the Western Buckeye League, Bath is at Salina, Elida is at Defiance, Wapakoneta takes on Kenton, Van Wert is at OG. That should be an interesting contest. Should be. And St. Mary's is on the road again. They will be at Shawnee. So we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, We'll have a couple of questions. We'll talk a little bit about the playoff situation as it's starting to shape up and a little bit of the details are starting to flutter in. We'll do that and more when we continue right after this. Guaneri's Pizzeria and Pub has partnered with Rider Nation Station this season so that every Friday night, Guaneri's can be Rough Rider Football Central. Guaneri's will be streaming Rough Rider Football live every Friday night at 7, paired with your favorite Rider Aid. Make sure to call and make your reservations now to ensure yourself a good seat. Call Guineris at 419-394-2244 and make your reservation today. And go Riders! Miller Funeral Home has been serving the Rough Rider community in its time of need since the 70s. Our business is a family affair dedicated to serving families with integrity, dignity, and compassion. Miller Funeral Home Proud to be a supporter of the Rough Rider community. Welcome back to the Doug Fry Show. Joe Herbert alongside head coach Doug Fry. And coach, we did receive an email this week, and I think it's a pretty legit question. We're going to fire this off to you. It's from Sean Sturwald. And here's the questions. What is the most important thing you have to do to prepare the team and coaching staff for a ball game? First of all, we really appreciate that question from Sean. Thanks for sending that in. Uh, good young man. He's uh, got a son on our team this year. He's a freshman, so going to be a good fo football player for us. Uh, well, I tell you what, I think uh, the toughest part in today's game is above the eyebrows right now. Uh, mm -hmm. The physical part is what we can see on film over and over again, but uh, making sure our kids are uh, focused in the right way. And uh, we spend a lot more time concerning ourselves about the St. Mary's Rough Riders than we do the particular right. opponent each week. So, um, you know, we're in here from a time standpoint, we're in here Saturday morning, bright and early. Uh, our coaches meet at 530 in the morning on uh, Saturday. So, um, you know, uh, we're in here starting at that point and uh, usually get out of here around 3 o'clock on Saturday and then, and then back in Sunday night for a Sunday night meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, so as preparation standpoint, we're getting everything prepared at that point as far as we can. And then uh, with the kids, uh, you know, we're trying to make sure we uh, focus on the mistakes that were made and try to clean those right. mistakes up from the week prior to that. But, uh, you know, like I said, it, uh, that's not an easy thing to do. Uh, mm -hmm. We're trying to make sure our kids are continuing forward and understand that uh, if we take care of our own house, there's a good chance that good things will happen. Well, let me elaborate on that. We, you guys obviously look at films. Do, do you as a coaching staff grade? Is that system still in effect 
you grade players and after it's all said and done, they receive like a percentage of how they perform during the game? Actually, we do as we sit here, as I look across the locker room, the last week's grades are still posted over there. As I uh, went through Coach Bachman's files when I was here, when I came in, and we're still in the old office and Coach Pretty stuff, uh, he had a file there that said, as he graded his players, that it took a 90% on the mm -hmm. grade scale to be a state champion. Uh, on those grades, 80% to win the league championship and 70 to be pa passing in the grades. And uh, so we post those grades. Our kids come in and look at them then. And our uh, defensive staff uh, post missed tackles and a number of those and a number of tackles that are made. And we actually on the wall behind me here have the original. There was tons of things that I found in trash cans and found stuck around when we returned here. And the original goal charts that we had under Coach Bachman, under Coach Purdy, and under myself are still on the wall mm -hmm. uh, in this locker room right here. And we made a few little changes here and there. But, yes, we do. We stick with that old school grading. And uh, the old linemen really like to come in and see where they've graded yeah. at. Yes. Because I remember you either you either got a plus, you either did the job, or you got a minus and you didn't do the and job. And if it's a fumble, it's a double minus. Uh, yeah. And if it's a uh, missed tackle, it's a double minus. Uh -huh. And there are cases where a young man uh, will make a block, get up and make a second mm -hmm. block so we will double plus those in, wow. in those cases there and in past years we've also um, done this two ways but the the constraints of COVID-19 so we don't want to really be in the locker rooms quite as much have changed this this year where we have a coach's grade and a self grade uh -huh. so the young men would grade themselves we would grade them and you know what we found through the years is actually the young men graded themselves lower than the coaches graded. a little harder yeah they're a little tougher on themselves yeah. throughout the years and, but it was always good to see how that correlated um, and uh, to be self-coached in that manner. We, but like I said, this year we've been unable to do that. Absolutely. Well, the mm -hmm. second part of uh, Sean's question is this. How do you set the tone for the week in preparation of the fo following game? Well, we take what maybe we didn't do extremely well the week before and try to make that a strength as far as – uh, the tone for the week as far as what, what need to be done. And, and uh, you know, there is an overlying tone, but also each individual is a little bit different. Yeah. And, uh, and, and what I've got the luck of and, and I'm fortunate enough to have is a tremendous coaching staff. So I, I maybe make that overlying tone that's going to be set for the week, but then uh, each of the coaches – uh, reiterate that we also have a cultural playbook that we developed in the off season. So on the wall over there for each of our teams, our kids and coaches, 40 of our kids and coaches came up with themes for each of the teams we play, mm -hmm. uh, and three theme words that are set already in the off season. So the kids have seen those since last March mm -hmm. and set by them. And, and we use those each week as our theme for the week. Interesting. Well, we thank mm -hmm. Sean for sending that uh, question to us. As I mentioned before the break, the uh, playoffs uh, details are starting to filter in, trickle in. Uh, some of the things that I, that, I, that I have received, of course, this is already done and passed, but by September 17th, all teams had to either opt in or opt out. Obviously, the Rough Riders have opted in. Now the next thing that will take place, and what well, it already probably has, new regions have been drawn. How, how, does that, how does that shape up? Has anything changed as far as the Rough Riders are concerned? From our standpoint, no. Now, tomorrow you can opt out. So, as you said, the September 17th was the day to opt in. Tomorrow you can opt out. Monday and Tuesday, I believe, the coaches vote. So, I'll get a vote packet on our region, and I'll be able to rank. I, I believe there's 26 or 27 teams in our region right okay. now. So, as region coaches, what we'll do is vote from 1 to 26 or 1 to 27 on how those teams rank in the region. And, uh, and then uh, they will seed the teams. The top 13, if there's 26, will have a home game. Okay. And there's an opportunity, if you play well enough, to um, have home games for three straight weeks. Sure. And I did just read this before I came in here. If there's a, a facility that doesn't have lights, the game will be moved to Saturday. Okay, without the lights, so there may be some people that don't have lights. Uh, we moved to Saturday. If there's a COVID-related issue, then you just uh, forfeit that game. And if you decide not to play, and, and we continue on. If there is an odd number in the region, there may be some bye weeks uh, for a week or two where you would not play. And then you also have the option to continue to play. If you have a bye week, you could schedule someone else and play them, even though it wouldn't be a playoff sure. game. And you can continue to play up to a 10-game season after 
um, the tournament's done if you're knocked out of the tournament. We, we're doing our best to continue to play JV and freshman games all the way to week nine on Saturdays, even if even if we were playing in the tournament or we continue in the tournament. So well, my question to you as a coach, you know, 20, 27 teams, 28, 26 teams in this particular region, obviously you haven't seen all of them play. Mm -hmm. How how can you how do you rank them? I mean, what information do you gather? Do you go to like JJ Huddle, or do you, is there others uh, some sort of service that you can look at? At least get a look at the team. Well, it, that's difficult. Yeah. And uh, even though the region, it's difficult and and fairly simple too, I guess. Uh, it's difficult because you have not seen all of those teams play. For myself, I've been around long enough. Mm -hmm. And I'll look at their records sure. and look at their scores, and, and I'll obviously take some time this weekend to take every one of those teams and see mm -hmm. what their record is at right. this point. And then our region hasn't really changed much, so uh, I have a pretty good idea of the strength of schedule and and where they're at. Now there might be some new coaches within that region that mm -hmm. really don't have that ability right. to do that. Right. And, and let, let's face it, uh, Trotwood Madison started playing again last yeah. week, so. I would say they're going to be ranked in the top <laughs> one or two in the region with right. their history of success. Right. So, yeah. Well, I will say this, that the brackets for the playoff picture should be posted around October 1st, mm -hmm. if the information I have is correct. That'll make so it interesting. It yeah. will. Mm -hmm. So, thank you for filling us in on that. As mm -hmm. the playoff starts to unfold, we're just three weeks away. It's close. It's getting close. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back, and we'll talk a little bit about the Van Wert game last Friday night. We'll do that and more as the Doug Fry Show continues right after this. American Manufacturing Solutions is proud to invest in St. Mary's and proud to sponsor Rough Rider football. Think AMS. Think logistics. Done right. AMS is your complete supply chain solutions provider. Have electrical service needs? AMS can take care of that too. Call us at 419-300-1007 or visit us at AmericanMFGSolutions.com. St. Mary's Foundry wants to take this opportunity to give a big shout out to all our local teams, wishing them a safe and extraordinary season. And speaking of great teams, St. Mary's Foundry would like to thank its very own team of hardworking employees for their loyalty and dedication. If you're looking for rewarding challenges and first string wages and benefits, check us out at stmfoundry.com or on hometownopportunities.com. St. Mary's Foundry, where iron and ingenuity meet. Welcome back to the Doug Fry Show. I'm your host, Joe Hurlbert, alongside Doug Fry. You're watching the Doug Fry Show on Rider Nation Station. Glad to have you along. Coach, the Rough Riders went on the road last week uh, to Van Wert, lost 34 to 28. But, you know, they, I saw signs of improvement. I think when you, when I, what I saw from the football game, you take away about three or four plays. And this could have very easily became a W for the Riders. Oh, we're, you know, it, and it, certainly I'm not built on excuses by right. any means. So I, I'm very hesitant as I say these things. But, uh, uh, we are just a blink away from being a three and one or four and a yeah. football team, and uh, we uh, thought that we made some progress, but we also thought there were some things that we need to clean up. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we had some coverage breakdowns in the secondary, mm -hmm. which was the last thing we wanted to do going into right. the ball game. We wanted to make sure. When I, as we talked about Sean's question earlier about preparation, as I went in Saturday with our defensive coaches, I said, I, I don't care what we do, but just make sure they, if they're going to score on us, it's 10, 12 play drive where they have to march yeah. it down and we, we make yeah. them earn what they're going to do. Uh, be a la of a, you know, a Kenton game a lot of times where maybe they go down and score on us, but they're going to have to play some perfection football to right. get it down. We don't want to give them that big hit. Right. Uh, what, uh, on a, the long ball, and then we wanted to make sure offensively we were hanging on to the football. Right. Well, those are two things that we still have not got to the point where we cleaned it up enough. And I always talk about going into the season. I think most coaches would um, would uh, reiterate this. Uh, I, I believe that Van Wert was a plus seven team going into the game on the really? plus minus turnover ratio. Wow. So one year when I was the head coach of Wapkinetta, we were pushing close to plus 30 on the plus minus turnover mm -hmm. ratio. We're hoovering around breaking even right now. Right. So as a coach, 
I'm really concerned about how prepared our team is, how hard we play, and, and how we do on that plus-minus turnover ratio. And we still have not got to the point where we've got yeah. a, a big advantage in the plus-minus turnover ratio, at least. So we continue to work on that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll take a look at some of the highlights offensively from last week, week's game. This is a nice run by Aiden Hinkle. As a matter of fact, Aiden had 25 carries for 123 yards. Two touchdowns, he averaged 4.9 yards mm -hmm. per carry, but good line surge, and he's just a hard-nosed runner. Well, here's a young man. He missed in the entire two days. He was going for 22 straight days. So, you know, we're uh, going into week five now, and so he's had a month of football conditioning to get back and get going a little bit. So I think from the personal standpoint of Aiden's standpoint, you're seeing him start to whip into a physical condition now and be able to uh, – handle the length of the game and be in better shape. That, but more encouraging even in Aiden's standpoint, because I, I know he's going to be there to play hard, is our O-line starting to come off the ball on that right side of the ball. Right. And uh, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Well, the Rough Riders had 332 yards of total offense, 225 on the ground. This play here came right after Hemelgarn's interception. <laughs> And he brought it back to this point on the field, and then we, we put it on the ground. Well, that, yeah, that's just atypical of what uh, my team has stood for through the years. And until we clean that up, we're not going to be able to win football games on a consistent basis. So, Gavin Reinecke uh, had, a, had a pretty decent evening throwing the football. He was <clears> 8 <throat> of 18 for 107 yards. He had one touchdown, a 66-yarder. Here's, here's another nice pass to uh, – to Hemelgarn. Hemelgarn's played a quarter of football for us all year, um, you know, and that was in the opening game against Bath. He's been out the last two weeks, and now he's back with us. You obviously, you can look at his athleticism on the <laughs> field right there. So, again, I don't know if he's in peak. Um, you can condition, you can work and practice, but you cannot get in peak game shape in football until you actually play the games. Yeah. So, I think he's getting close right now, but. Uh, uh, that's just well, a pretty athletic it's a nice job by Gavin, but it's a very athletic yeah. play by uh, Hemelgarn afterwards. And a nice asset to have back. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, this next play is uh, a nice run by Dylan Trogland. This is on first down play. Mm -hmm. Just found the hole on the left side of the line and picked up good yardage. Dylan's having a very good year for us. A very versatile football player with plus with good speed and uh, very good job by the left side of the line right there, Patterson and uh, – Ward on that side of the line. So, very good job and very good run. Just well executed football play. And this next play is going to be another run by Braden Hemelgarn. Picks up good yardage here. I think maybe it's not Hemelgarn. That is Hemelgarn. It is Hemelgarn. He has a very good way of dipping in there and dipping back out. He has uh, athleticism, but he has a natural patience about him as a runner, which is very difficult to teach as a coach. It's hard to believe it's six carries, 59 yards, but he had, he had, a, he had a good ball game. I think you'll see more and more of. Hemelgarn as he gets back into game shape and uh, had, a, had a good ball game for us. I think we'll see the same play on the next one, just uh, same play, just from a different angle. Just nice patience as they sit in there. If you're a young football player watching running backs, he sits in there, lets his blockers get set up, and then when he knows it's time to go, it's time to go. Next play, this is Aiden Hinkle it's on a short TD run. That was big. Powers it into the end zone. Good surge on the right side of the line. Takes it on in. So you can see him reemerging as a football player, getting in better shape. This next play is Gavin Reinecke setting up and uh, threw a nice ball. I think the only thing that didn't happen on this one, we just didn't make the catch. Yeah, it was pretty good defense by their kid, and he delivered it on the money. That's Himmelgarn again. And, uh, you know, I got to think as we go on, that's a catch he's going to make. Yeah. And, uh and get it done. But, uh, you know, it's just one of those plays that's going to happen in a ball game. But I, I thought it was a well-executed football play and just didn't quite make the play. That's kind of – that play might be a little bit uh, reflective of our season right there. Uh -huh. We're just kind of real close yeah. but not quite there yet. So. Well, I'm starting to – I'm starting to uh, – to really like Gavin Reinick and the way he's starting to set up in the pocket on that last particular mm -hmm. play, stood up tall and just mm -hmm. kind of hit uh, Hemelgarn on stride. This next play is uh, – well, I'm not really sure about this next play. I'll <laughs> let you comment on I'll this I'll watch one. it here first and see what uh, what transpires here. But, uh, yeah, I'm not sure either. Uh, well, I, I can tell you my thought is <laughs> why is that not pass interference? Well, you can let Mark Sisko, as he comes in with <laughs> roles of the game, talk about that. But, uh, 
you know, obviously uh, we we hope for a flag to be thrown there, even though we would have hoped more for a touchdown. Of but, course, uh, of course, it's late in the ball game, and I mm-hmm. thought that to me that's just a bad time for the officials. Again, like I said, on that one, but. there's years where you look <laughs> back, Joe, and you think, golly, you know, everything just kind of went our way, and uh, there's a lot well, of things that just haven't true. quite gone our way uh, the last few weeks. But uh, you know, I, I can't. Uh, we don't ever say, well, that should have, would have, could have. Yep, we just keep it. playing the ball game, and we never blame an official for yep, anything. Absolutely. So. And, and you said it before. You, you, you don't blame a mm-hmm. win or a loss mm-hmm. on one particular no. play. That particular play did not sure. lose this ball game. Absolutely. So, and this is, the, this is the final play of the ball game, and just, just, a, just a timing issue in the backfield, I believe. Yeah, doggone it. I think we had a play called that there that would have been a, a, a sure first down and might have been further than that. So uh, I thought it was well executed at the end of the ball game, with the exception of, of this play here. And, uh, um, yeah, I, we're getting closer. You know, I saw in the leg, when you look across the leg, um, you know, when you have a, a trigger man back, and most teams in this league return their starting uh, quarterbacks, with the exception of us and Wapakoneta. Mm-hmm. So, and as we continue to grow in those areas, I think we're improving, and hopefully it will lead to some wins. On the defensive side of the football, these are the next ones that we'll see. Uh, um, but the defense, I'll tell you what, Owen Trees, he's a pretty, he's a pretty good You know, I, at this point, we're not going to see Kenton obviously, unless something changes at the end of the season on the schedule. And I know Cornell uh, coached against his father when he was playing with Mock at Kenton and, and, and the Suns there is a very good skill athlete and they have some good skilled kids. But up to this point, uh, my vote <laughs> is for Trees. As a, and it wasn't so much the touchdown passes that, that he hit because we obviously had some coverage breakdowns that made that a little bit simpler, but it was – three or four times throughout the ball game where things were completely broke down. Right. And he just made an athletic play, either yeah. running it or dumping it to a receiver, which I, I thought. And, you know, in addition to that, and we hear in this society a lot of times where, you know, you need a break or a kid's got to get off the field. This young man played every snap that I saw yeah. at on defense and was involved in a lot of tackles. So this young man on both sides of the ball played a and great I think, ball and, game. And we'll take a look at it as we watch the, the some of the, the uh, highlights is that – it seemed like the defense is just about a half a step away mm-hmm. just from getting him. And yes. so, but uh, he, he made a lot of things I, out of nothing. He and, played a way of a ball yeah. game. And, uh, you know, as a coach, you know, you, you're, you want to win the game, but you have uh, great respect for young men that play hard and, and, and with the effort. And like I said, I didn't see him come off the field. Yeah. He played a way of a game. This first play is just good defense. They just swarm to the football. They, they find it and they, they, they just swarm good, good play. I thought early in the game we were playing with great emotion. I thought we continued to. We had some missed tackles that need cleaned up and and coverage breakdowns that need cleaned up. But, yeah, this is a nice football play right here. Um, One of our backers coming through. I don't really see who that is on the inside right there. And our DBs closed. But good pursuit to the ball. This next play is just another nice defensive stop. It's a good job by our complete defense. That's a uh, in zone read plays, which is big in today's game, and is, is what taking itself all the way to the NFL. And uh, you know he's a, just an athletic, good quarterback that reads that well, and it's it's good team defense. And this next play, this this was big. This this is a this is a big pick by Braden Hemelgard. This is yeah. his first of two. The previous game against uh, OG, we really missed Braden. Himmelgarn, I mean, you know, we were all over the place coverage-wise, and you can see you can coach so many things in this game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, uh, you know, athleticism at some point, as as much as the game has changed, continues to take over. And that was well-coached right there, well-read, but just an athletic football play. And as I mentioned, this is is the same play. This is just a different angle of of the interception. Yeah, very good football play. Makes a nice break and good throw and just well defended. This next defensive play, that this is what I mean when it was just a game of inches. We're just like a, a step away from getting him. And it is a game of inches, but, you know, you got to cover those guys yeah, back here too. Do. So uh, we need to do a lot better job. <clears throat> this next play, this one, and I think the writers concentrated on this because this, this is an actual lateral here. Yes, it is. It's a lateral. We, we, we worked on defending this play throughout the week. Yeah. So, 
you know, we'd seen it a number of times. We watch a lot of film with our defensive guys. So, um, you know, we uh, had three complete days of film work with our defensive guys. So the game's changed a lot. You can't hit as much in the game anymore with, with the restrictions that go on. So we try to work the mental part a lot more. This next play is just it's almost, an, almost another interception. Yeah, almost could have, would have, should have. But uh, <laughs> yeah, the guy, that doesn't work too well. Got so uh, <laughs> we like to actually intercept those. So. And uh, here's just good pressure again on Owen Treese. And... I thought up front, and there's, you know, he that one he didn't connect on, but a number of others. And, you know, this was the first time we've really seen a complete healthy Van Wert team every year. You know, there's been some guys out of the lineup. They've they've stayed. They're they're obviously well coached. They're very athletic, and they've stayed completely healthy, which usually leads to success. This is another yeah. uh, t another touchdown pass by Trees, but it looks like the defense did, did they mix the coverage up? Did some somebody go absolutely somebody go one way and they should not have gone absolutely, absolutely. And I don't ever talk about individuals as right, we go through right, things, I get but. That. Uh, yeah, there's just uh, and a complete breakdown in the coverage yeah. right there. Yeah. And on this next play here, that this is this is a showstopper here as far as mm -hmm. I was concerned. This is a this is a big interception. Braden Helmogard. Here's again. Here's a young man we've had for a quarter of football. Yeah. All year, and uh, you know we're our backs are to the wall right here, and uh, twenty-one fourteen, and uh, you know this uh, makes it a game to the whistle right here. Well, he does a good job staying in bounds. He he definitely did, and I, I never peeked over there to question <laughs> question that call by any means. So, uh, uh, and uh, it was even on Van Wert's sideline. And they didn't seem to say a thing, but it, yeah, this is just a pure athletic athletic play. I think he's all in bounds the whole way. I think he was too. My X-ray vision. Yeah, I right think so here. too, yeah. for sure. <laughs> And this is what I meant too. Is this you know just, just a game, just, just a game of inches? And I don't know why that would be in there. Yeah. But anyhow, it's it, anytime it's a, it's a, touchdown, it's a touchdown for us, I like it. <laughs> we'll go. We'll go with it. So that that's kind of look at the uh, St. Mary's Van Wert game. We'll put that one to bed, coach, and then we'll uh, we'll talk a little bit okay. when we come back after the break. Right. We'll talk about this week's opponent, the Shawnee Indians. We'll do that and more right after this. For all your sporting good needs, visit Albert Sporting Goods at 121 West Spring Street serving the St. Mary's community since 1980. All Glaze Equipment Rental is your source for all your equipment needs. Whether you're a contractor or a homeowner with a project, we can help get the job done more efficiently. Check us out at 1900 Salina Road or allglazeequipmentrental.com or just call 419-394-7883. All Glaze Equipment Rental. Welcome back to the Doug Fry Show. Joe Hurlbert alongside head coach Doug Fry. Coach, again, this week we're on the road. Uh, we're at Shawnee, and, of course, Ryder Nation Station will be there to bring you the broadcast. I hope we'll get on a little bit sooner than we did last week. I think it was 20 minutes before we actually went on the air at Van Wert, before we got everything hooked up and plugged in and got the green light to go. But hopefully things will go smoother for not only us, but we'll go smoother for you as well. We'll get a, we'll get a, a W on our side of the ledger. But Shawnee... When you when I think of Shawnee, I think of athleticism and a lot of speed. Absolutely, and that hasn't changed any. I think Coach Cooper, we came up through the uh, coaching ranks at the same time, and I believe this is his third year there now. So his impact is being felt on their program right now, and and uh, uh, they're playing good football right now. It, it's a leg, golly, you look every week and you just never know. They a lot of tight ball games, and uh, we've had. Uh, through the years, a lot of very, very tight games at Shawnee also. So, it uh, should be another exciting night. Well, they defeat Walpock last week 9-7. to seven. I think earlier in the year they, they put some points on the board. So, it's, it's almost been a, a season of some weeks there's a lot of points you score, some weeks there's mm -hmm. not. So, it's, it's, it's hard to see any, like, consistency, so to speak. I think that's probably a key word right there. What you're not seeing is consistency across. Yeah. And, uh uh, and we're all searching for that. We're sure. all finding ways. I don't know how many times I've done plans, redone plans, put 60-man rosters together, mm -hmm. redone the 60-man roster, 
change practice plans do for, for different COVID right. circumstances throughout the period of time. So I think that every coach would attest to the same thing. Now, has this got to be your diff diff most difficult year with the 60-man rosters and trying to put people on the roster and – and just kind of, is this probably one of your well, most you know, difficult years? you know, you look years? at you look at a young man. I get vouchers. I get sixty vouchers. Okay, and um, sixty kids get that voucher for two tickets to a ball game, for example, this week. So I've got kids that are injured that have played for us all the way through. They don't all of a sudden they're injured and they don't get tickets to the game, so their parents can't go to the games really? anymore. So I, I have no choice because sure. I have to have sixty capable right. young men that are dressed for that ball game. Right. So um, yeah, so it's really from a coach's standpoint, and I'm sure all of us are criticized at different times, but I don't have, I mean, I've got ex players that are texting me this and that. Can I get a ticket? I, I get two tickets. I paid for them both. So right. I paid 14 bucks like everybody else for right. my two tickets this week for my wife and daughter. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's all for my family goes. So it's just a, uh, from that standpoint, it makes it tough on families and the right. situation it goes through. So, and you may have a young man that gets sick on Tuesday or Wednesday legitimately sick, cold, uh, you know, fever, whatever, but it's not the COVID. He's back on Thursday. Well, you've replaced him on the 60-man roster already. So, uh, uh, you know, there is no choice. You can't sure. wait around in that, that case. And uh, so, yeah, it's not been the yeah. <laughs> easiest thing to uh, try to handle this year, but we're all in the same boat, so we try to do our best. At least we're playing. So. Well, we wish you well on this Friday night. We're going to take a break. We're going to have one final word with the coach when we come back right after this. For all your sporting good needs, visit Albert Sporting Goods at 121 West Spring Street, serving the St. Mary's community since 1980. Aqualaze Equipment Rental is your source for all your equipment needs. Whether you're a contractor or a homeowner with a project, we can help get the job done more efficiently. Check us out at 1900 Salina Road or AuglazeEquipmentRental.com or just call 419-394-7883. Auglaze Equipment Rental. American Manufacturing Solutions is proud to invest in St. Mary's and proud to sponsor Rough Rider Football. Think AMS, think logistics, done right. AMS is your complete supply chain solutions provider. Have electrical service needs? AMS can take care of that too. Call us at 419-300-1007 or visit us at American MFG Solutions. Com. St. Mary's Foundry wants to take this opportunity to give a big shout out to all our local teams, wishing them a safe and extraordinary season. And speaking of great teams, St. Mary's Foundry would like to thank its very own team of hardworking employees for their loyalty and dedication. If you're looking for rewarding challenges and first string wages and benefits, check us out at stmfoundry.com or on hometownopportunities.com. St. Mary's Foundry, where iron and ingenuity meet. Gwinnery's Pizzeria and Pub has partnered with Rider Nation Station this season so that every Friday night, Gwinnery's can be Rough Rider Football Central. Gwinnery's will be streaming Rough Rider Football live every Friday night at 7, paired with your favorite Rider Aid. Make sure to call and make your reservations now to ensure yourself a good seat. Call Guineris at 419-394-2244 and make your reservation today. And go Riders! Miller Funeral Home has been serving the Rough Rider community in its time of need since the 70s. Our business is a family affair dedicated to serving families with integrity, dignity, and compassion. Miller Funeral Home, proud to be a supporter of the Rough Rider community. Coach, one final word. Again, I ask it each and every week. What's it going to take for the Rough Riders to get that W on their side of the ledger? Well, I think uh, the St. Mary's Rough Riders need to play like the St. Mary's Rough yeah. Riders is what I would basically say. So um, if we can start getting, uh, you know, what we're used to at least in the last uh, four years mm -hmm. of getting great effort every play, uh, cleaning up the, uh, you know, the ball security on offense, mm -hmm finishing tackles, not giving easy touchdowns, and I think we'll have an opportunity to be sure. successful, at least a better opportunity. Um, I'm sure Shawnee's going to say the same thing to their kids right. uh, as we go through things. And, uh, um, you know, the other thing we really haven't talked about, that's what it's going to take, but as we talked about the COVID things, you, you know, we get a 10-minute halftime too. Mm -hmm. So a 10-minute halftime, 
is just about when you're making the adjustments, it's time to hit the field again. Right. So, uh, so uh, as we go through things, uh, that's been a little more difficult. So more consistency that we can reach sure. as a football team in the base area is the better chance we have for success then. Well, so. we wish you all the best uh, Friday night against the Shawnee Indians. Thank you. Well, that's going to wrap it up for the, this edition of the Doug Fry Show. We want to remind you once again that you can see the Doug Fry Show every Thursday evening on Rider Nation Station. Go to, our, go to YouTube, check out Rider Nation Station, and watch the Doug Fry Show. Also, Rules of the Game with Zach Farrell and Mark Sisko shows approximately an hour before kickoff on Friday nights. Enjoy, watch that. And we'll be with you Friday night at 7 o'clock for the kickoff for the game between the St. Mary's Rough Riders and the Shawnee Indians. Join us then. For head coach Doug Fry, I'm Joe Herbert. Hope you enjoyed this edition of the Doug Fry Show. Until next week, so long, everyone. Thanks for watching another episode of Rider Nation Station. Help us help you by subscribing on YouTube or following us on Facebook.